Hi, welcome to Infusion Health, the podcast. I'm comedian Chris Patrick, a.k.a. Self-Proclaimed Power Man. And I'm here with my co-host and significant other, Rach. Hey, guys. Now, today we got an uh, interesting story. Um, we're talking about business. And one of the things about business is you create something, you, you know, it starts to sell. Then all of a sudden you make a deal. Are you uh, get somebody who wants to, who you think is going to take you to the next level. And then you find out that they own everything and all that. And we're going to talk to, um, her name is Cheval. She designed shoes, but she did design um, wedding gowns, but she can't use her name because she's under contract obligation not to use her own name. And it's basically, you know, from the old, from the old, the old uh, saying, you know, um, you know, when you do something, you, you hire a lawyer, then you hire another one to watch him. And when you're young, and I've seen that, you know, being in the entertainment business, when you're young and you, you think you're going to do this and you sign this contract and there's nobody there, you know, <laughs> nobody there with you or whatever. And you're like signing it. And next thing you know, you sign this, you sign, you know. So she's going to tell us about her story. And um, I can't wait to bring her in. And Cheval, welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. <laughs> okay, so um, we know we know you can't use your real name because of uh, contra- contractual obligations. But can you tell us that you design you design wedding wedding dresses or wedding gowns or? Yes, um, I'm formally known as a wedding dress designer. Uh, okay. You may have caught some of uh, of what I was doing before on a, on a show called Say Yes to the Dress. Yes, mm-hmm. um, and I've I've been involved in actually a two year litigation now, um, all kind of revolving around a contract that I signed when I was just 25 years old. So a good 10 years ago. Um, and I'm still actually in that active litigation. Uh, but I've kind of, you know, looked at my situation and um, tried to figure out a way to get back out there and have some form of a creative expression. So I have changed my name publicly and I've gone into a non-competitive category, which mm. is huge. So, so, so yes, so y- say yes to the dress. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's a lot like uh, Project Runway, but you win the show and then they no, get, no, no. Okay, mm-hmm. you, you don't say yes to the dress is women that are going in to Kleinfeld and wanting a wedding dress. Okay. Um, this beautiful person that we're talking to had um, designed quite a few dresses okay. for the company that she decided to sign this contract with. Okay. You know, no insult to her, but. You know, just like our kids are right around that age, young and dumb. You don't know. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you've you believed that they have the full ten, mm, intent to treat you as kindly as your parents, protect you like your parents. Mm-hmm. And then you sign the contract. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. In my situation, it was also too. Um, I was afraid to, uh, you know, be combative. And I think uh, I speak for a lot of young designers and just young creatives out there that want the opportunity and they see it as their dream job. And if they push back, you know, or, uh, try to negotiate on their own behalf, somebody else will get the job, you know? So in in my situation too, it was, um, just, you know, something that I was hopeful for. And there was a, maybe a part of me that always felt like I could always provide great value. And at some point I would, I would have a contract that reflected my, you know, contributions in that sense. So, mm-hmm. so when you, you so, hold on. Uh-huh. so when you, so when you signed the contract, sorry, Rich, so when you signed the contract, did you have, did you have a lawyer look at it first or? No, no, I signed it at 25 without a lawyer. Okay. Okay. And my question is, you know, how much of it was played into emotion, right? Like if you don't sign this contract, you might lose it. Right. Um, I know many young artists out there, like they, they're afraid not to sign a contract because they might lose that wonderful opportunity. Right. Yes. And that, that definitely played a role for me in my experience. Um, I was afraid to, to lose the opportunity and I was, um, you know, always hopeful, but 10 years later that, that definitely was, was not really the, um, the interpretation, nor did it reflect the experience I had for a 10 year period. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but, but I think in, in my situation now, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm, I'm involved in this massive lawsuit and I'm just hopeful that I can be an example, you know, for, so, for people uh, out there that might be in my position mm-hmm. um, at that age. And let me just, you know, note that you are a living example because two great artists that didn't know better than to sign a contract were Elvis and um, then um, uh, Prince. 
You know, they yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they, they had they, some hard contracts. They yeah, they signed contracts, but they I think Elvis never did have a contract with the Colonel, but um the Colonel basically was his manager, but there was never a signed a signed contract. But the Elvis um the Colonel had a lot of stuff on him and stuff like that to to continue being his manager, but that's the thing when when you go into business when you're starting to climb up and you're starting to see the money, you know, the, those money signs get in your head, but you got hey, you know what? You got to take a dose of reality and go, hey, I need to get a lawyer to look at this, you know. And, of course, you're there, and they're like, well, if you don't sign this, we're going to, you know, well, I need to take it, you know. And you got to be firm and just say, hey, I got to get somebody. I got to get somebody who's representing me. Yes, my perspective now is just you always have to have somebody that is uh, willing to come in on your behalf and um, have your interests in mind. And that's kind of something that I'm focusing on moving forward is, how can I make sure that my story uh, will inspire others in a way that they have their interests being protected and, um, you know, thinking on a, on a bigger picture at this point, because it's not just obviously designers. It also happens in the music industry and yeah. in, and with respect to non-competes and all these other things that yeah. a lot of industries um, try to implement. Yeah, cause I was watching a show, um, Making the Band with uh, P. Diddy, and he he wanted the group to sign these contracts and they get their advancement money. And the guys, this one girl wouldn't sign it. She's like, and they're like, sign it, sign it, sign it. And of course, his lawyer was explaining. I'm like, well, when you look at his lawyer, who's his lawyer representing? His lawyer's representing him. So you need somebody to represent you and you need to look at the lawyer and have, a, have somebody who knows what they're doing. Because <laughs> obviously, you know, you don't, I don't. So have a lawyer who knows what contracts look like and can look at it and say, all right, this is what he's doing. And it can explain it to you because he has your best interest at heart. Especially if you're exactly. paying him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also there's so much nuance that goes into that stuff that I've, there's a lot of different contacts out there, you know, and it, it, it all kind of depends on, on the wherewithal of, of everything going into it. You know, there's a lot of contacts that people don't, um, aren't privy to. So, mm-hmm. you know, in those cases, it's, it's hard to give the full picture. Yeah. You know, some of those new people that are going into new contracts and stuff like that. My daughter hasn't been blessed with a contract yet, but she's going into acting. And for her, you know, it's all about, oh, my gosh, I freaking am making it right now. It's time for a sign of a contract. You know, even before that, it's, you know, hopefully to get these deals. Then you move into the contract and. Was there any of that where before you got to the contract with this company, were you making dresses with them and then got into the, like, how did that relationship start? Actually, um, I used to work at another house of brands. Um, so I had a career, you know, established already. Um, and I, I actually found this company and reached out to them originally. Um, and so it, it was definitely, um, a situation where I was looking for an opportunity. Um, and I think it was probably either my second or third interview there where, you know, of course there's going to be a contract of some sort if I'm coming on as a head designer. Mm -hmm. Um, so there was, there wasn't any, um, you know, establishment or real relationship before that. But, uh, but with respect to your daughter, you know, obviously, you know, with, with artists and, talent in general if you're going into the acting world or you're in influencing you know there's a lot of contracts that are involved especially like influencing agreements where you know you're signing um to endorse a product of some sort you know so again it just kind of speaks to that like you just want to make sure that you're giving yourself time to to understand what it all can mean and what how it could potentially be interpreted if it's not protecting your interests. Mm-hmm. but also too is is you know you're a young artist so you probably don't have, you know, a lot of money. So you go into it and this guy like, well, sign this contract. Well, I need my lawyer to look at it. Now to take it to a lawyer, a lawyer may charge you 150 an hour, but it's worth paying that 150 an hour because if you pay that, however much it is, you know, if you do pay that, as opposed to then you just sign the contract, then you find out later that they're making money off you and all the money right. you get nothing, you know, so it's worth paying that, that little 150 bucks for an hour just say, hey. Because he's he has your best interest at heart, and he can he can look at it and say, okay, this is what you need to do. This is you know. Yes, yes, I I definitely recommend a lawyer always now. Uh, but even in my next kind of mission and and building out a foundation, that is something I want to 
hopefully focus in on is how to provide resources and pro bono attorneys for Mm -hmm. um, people that might not be able to afford a second set of eyes or a legal set of eyes um, on something that they're looking to venture into. Mm -hmm. Well, well, my thing is too being, being an entrepreneur myself is that one of the things you need to do when you start out is get your team together. Now, even if you can't afford them, you know, you can always talk to a lawyer and say, Hey, this, I may be coming in these contracts and the lawyer said, well, Hey, when you get one, I'll charge you this, but come in, have, have me look at it, you know, and they'll tell you, don't sign nothing until I look at it. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I've looked at some of your new art. It's on, um, your Instagram, which is. She is Cheval is one of my Instagrams. And then we also have all that glitters on the gram, which, uh, my fiance and I actually started as our podcast. Instagram. Um, and obviously, you know, during my lawsuit, I had to hand over what I always thought was my personal Instagram over to the corporation. And so, um, I'm just grateful that social media does give you a platform to reach people because my Mm -hmm. goal in sharing a lot of my lawsuit was to make sure people knew what was going on. Um, authenticity is such a big thing for me, especially in my design expression. And so I really had a hard time, you know, grappling the thought of, how can I reach people that I've been speaking to on a personal level for so long that don't know I'm no longer behind those messages, you know? So that was something that was really tough, but yeah, um, I now have two, two great Instagrams to, to speak to people and it's from my voice and as scary as social media can be, I am very grateful for it. Yes. Yeah. And this is your own brand now, right? You have not signed a contract with anybody. So this particular brand, um, she is Cheval, is actually a team of women. Okay. Um, one who I met um, through the Yale School of Management, and they were actually covering my case. So we developed a strong friendship, and she is the um, chief operating officer. And then um, another young lady um, I had the pleasure of working with in my former um, position. Uh, she was my sales director. And so we have a 10-year uh, professional relationship as well as a friendship. And so she's working on kind of the con- customer experience side and sales side. Um, so the three of us, you know, are building it. We're the, the founding members. Um, and we've just been hyper-focused on, on you know, new specialty products and a way to create community and a place for women to find sparkly shoes and feel good about themselves. <laughs> yeah. So do you ever see like five, 10 years down the road? Because in 2027, you'll be finally done with this contract, right? So my contract actually ended on August 1 of this year. Okay. And, you know, up until that time, I was very much under the impression I would be able to go back into bridal as long as I didn't use my name. Um, and then, you know, a few days before the district ruling or the district court ruling um was enforcing a five-year non-compete outside of my contract mm-hmm. where I cannot identify to the trade that my former employer manufactures and sells, um, which is a, it's a, it's a non-compete in, in, a, in its own facet, but it's relevant to me, the human being, right. more than me using my name. So in this case, it doesn't matter what name I use. I cannot identify to that trade that they compete in for a period of five years. Um, So if this is outside of the contract technically, but it would be until 2027. So while I'm not under contract with them anymore, that is, that is the restriction that's currently on me. So is is it possible you could, you could get like a friend and start the company under her name and you just work behind the scenes? You know, the, the legal nuance to me at this point, like I'm not, I fully am still not aware of, you know, how things can be interpreted and Mm -hmm. what is really legally allowed. And so in my best interest, I've just said, I need to respect the ruling that has been given to me. Mm -hmm. And I kind of see it as it's not worth tampering with. Mm -hmm. I I need to stay in my lane and be respectful of what the court is, has, you know, decided. And I have rights to appeal, which I have. Um, and in the meantime, you know, for me, I think it's in my best interest to really focus on something that is non-competitive, mm-hmm. um, that really falls in this category where I know I'm doing the right thing. And that's kind of just been my guiding light 
Um, but of course, you know, there's been, you know, talk and thought like, oh, how could I potentially still do what I think has always been my greatest gift, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, but you know, if I have to wait five years, I will wait five years, you know, so it's kind of, it's one of those interesting things. Um, but I also think again, like this particular provision, um, is something that I want people to know about because it, it, this can happen. Mm -hmm. And in this case, you know, it's another, I can be that example of beware and like this, this is why you want to make sure that you know exactly what's going into something or how it could potentially be interpreted later on. Mm. And, and that's the thing with, with signing, with signing contracts. Cause I was watching um, the playboy docuseries, you know, behind playboy and here you had girls that were, you know, um, naked in bathtubs and stuff like that. They're getting ready to shoot them. And all of a sudden the guy comes here, sign this. And of course, you know, <laughs> you're going to sign. Yeah, this he's in the bathtub. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, and, and it's like, you're not thinking lawyer and all that. You know, I'm, I got the lights are on. The photographer's ready to shoot me. All of a sudden this contract comes to me here. Sign this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I would say for you, um, just asking, you know, um, is it emotional? Right. You don't want to lose your art because I know a lot of people step away from all that when something goes sideways, you know, that you don't want to lose your art. But right now, you know, you're just building on something beautiful. It might not be bridal, but your your shoes are dynamic and um, and, you know, you don't want to lose that art. You don't want to step away. Yeah, yeah. it's given me some time to really marinate. Uh, you know, I've been in this lawsuit for almost two years now. And one thing that I'm really grateful for is that it's made me really um, be like, there's a form of Mm self-assessment that comes with all of this. And I do identify as a very creative person, but the reason it's so important to me is because there is reciprocation. Like that's such a big part of it for me is like who on the other end is connecting with me and appreciating this. Mm -hmm. And while it was devastating, you know, to not be doing what I've trained my whole life, my education, all my industry experiences, I I still can do something that feels like I can, I can connect with another individual through an artistic expression. And so that's where my focus has gone now is that, you know, I can see the silver lining in that. And also, you know, this is an opportunity for me to reach even more women because with shoes, you know, it's, it's a broader category in the sense of. Yeah. Wedding dress design, you know, it's it's usually a, a woman that's engaged, you know, yeah. and in this case, you know, it's it's anyone. Anyone can yes. wear shoes. So I do love that. It's a it's a product line that carries you places and it's given me a new perspective on how I identify, of course, and then how I can still relate to people in a in a meaningful, hopefully encouraging way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, and what I see for you is, you know, you're building off shoes right now, which is a safe zone for you, but also a building out experience for other people, you know, even a building out experience for you, because now you're not in bridal, you can, you know, and maybe in the future, bring it to other dresses or other pieces of clothing that match with these shoes and start having this relationship with these you know, other women that you never thought you would have. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I always joke uh, or make a, a lightheartedness about it that like, you know, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And in my case, you know, life gave me lemons and I'm not allowed to make lemonade. <laughs> so like, yeah. What do I do with these lemons? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, <laughs> so uh, it's been a very interesting journey, but um, being where I am right now, while I'm not on the other side of it, by no means, um, I definitely feel a much more profound sense of, uh, of like purpose. Um, and I think the support system has been very rare in that, you know, I've had these incredible people that have stood by me through it and just, they, they genuinely want to see good things happen for me. And I think that is such a blessing because with so much of this world being divided and just people tearing other people down, you know, I have this amazing community and it, it's inspiring every single day. And it's like, gives me a good sense of responsibility um, to not feel negative and like want to get back out there somehow. <laughs> right. Well, also yeah. too, I want to, I want to say to the people out there, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there, entrepreneurs like myself. And, but like I said before, establish your team now, you know, um, there are a lot of resources out there. Um, to help you start a business. And a lot of this stuff is free that you can just go on onto the, you know, your, your county website and, and all that. 
and or your state website, and they'll give you things as far as starting. In, what's the difference between an LLC? What's the difference between an LLC and a you know and a corporation? Should you incorporate? And these these are this is stuff that is out there for free for you. But also to talk to other entrepreneurs and say, hey, who's your accountant? Who's your lawyer? Who's, you know, and start networking out there. But do that now before you start, because when the contracts do come in, you got somebody to go, hey, I need this person to look at it, you know, and you're aware. And and that's that's the most thing is just being aware of of what's going on, as opposed to this guy's going to make. I signed a contract with this guy. I'm going to make millions of dollars. I'm going to be. And then all of a sudden you're like, I don't own any of this. And the little money I make, he's going on to make billions or millions, you know, (laughs) Totally. Totally. Yeah. That's the way to do it. And there's so much, um, resource, you know, like if if you don't have the resources, the resourcefulness can kick in in a lot of facets with the internet now and being able to go out and research and see what other people are doing. And, and I always say like, despite, you know, negative experiences, I still think most people are inherently good and they want to support and be a part of something bigger than. So, um, you know, even in my position, it's like, gosh, I just want to, the other women succeed so right. like that's mm-hmm. you know however i can help and that i'm there for it uh, in that sense mm-hmm. even you um now have you established your foundation does it have a name we are actually yes we just got approved for a 501c3 and uh we will be focusing the curriculum on um providing resources and pro bono attorneys for young creatives and entrepreneurs not just specific to the design world, but, you know, anybody that's kind of looking to get into business or small business management, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Or maybe it's influencers too, you know, that need help with a contract reviewing that kind of stuff. Um, We have been, we did go by a girl you might know um, as our, you know, hopeful name, but we're not set on anything just yet. And we, we actually don't know exactly how it's going to be involved with all that we've got going on with the business, you know, it's, it, it, it's definitely a different territory with it being a nonprofit. Right. Um, so there's obviously a lot of nuance that goes into it, but we're also learning about that kind of world as well. Uh, but we know what we want to accomplish with it. So hopefully by the beginning of next year, we'll, we'll be able to officially launch it. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take it, take it to the, taking it to the next level, but you know, um, you you got to learn from your mistakes. You got to learn from your mistakes, especially in business. I also think it's important what Shival is doing. You know, when you've learned from your mistakes, protecting the other people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, very important. Very important. <laughs> And, and that's the thing. And that's the thing with, with young entrepreneurs. If you if you're totally, totally oblivious, oblivious to all the stuff that's going on, there are tons and tons of um, night classes or, you know, courses you can take on starting businesses. And it's worth spending the money. And good news, you can write it off. It's <laughs> right. It's, right. It's, exactly. worth, it's worth taking a business. It's worth taking a business class or taking a night business course or something like that just to find out Absolutely. where you're at. What is this? What is this? Because the more, you know, you know, the better for you, you know, like G.I. Joe's say, you know, knowing is half the battle, you know. Yep, exactly. Exactly. And just a side note, um, you know, our children, you know, even for the famous people out there, you know, our children want to start getting into show business and all that. Yeah, we know the ropes, right? We, you know, we know how to connect this person with that person, this person with that person. But our younger children don't know how to listen to us you know we didn't know how to listen to our own parents right 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 (laughs) and we're like you know we could get we can tell our children a million no's and they're going to go to that one yes from the stranger right and that stranger just told them the same thing we told them (laughs) (laughs) but it's important but some of us got to learn through experience so (laughs) you know the hard docs you know (laughs) But I think it's important that even the parents listening to this that already know the right way, you know, show these other things to their children. So, you know, even the difficult children that are wanting to be artists and creators are able to find the right information. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> well, there's th- there's yeah. things too, like, you know, um, the simple thing is. Um, and let's, let's walk you through it. You know, I, I come up with this widget. I invent this widget um, and I go get a patent. Now going to get a patent is good. That means nobody else can copy it, but that patent's only good for seven years where 
I come up with something where I can say, hey, um, everything inside of it, I'm not going to patent. I'm going to trademark to me to where nobody can. So and th- these are just little things you learn as you go along. And these are things that you that is worth knowing, too, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, because, you know, you, you, you start out something like, oh, I'm going to get this patent. OK, seven years ago, seven years now, somebody goes into patent, starts copying your product. Now you got competition, you know, or like I said, if you have a formula or something like that, it, it's also good. Well, I can trademark this formula that way. It's mine and nobody can use it. Nobody because it's trademarked under me. And these are things that a class or people will teach you as you go along to know, hey, you're probably better off doing this or doing it this way. You know? Right, right. Yep, absolutely. So through this, what is the strongest lesson that you have learned? Um, whew, strongest lesson I've learned. Um, <laughs> I don't want to quote, I don't mean to quote somebody else, but I would say that um, adversity and challenges and stress and these things that feel like setbacks, are most likely the stepping stones that's going to take you to a a higher level of, of meaning and mission. And, um, you know, not not to say that like, Oh, you've got to go through some, you know, horrible thing to come out the other side. (laughs) It's more that like, you know, how you react to things and how you see it as an opportunity, as opposed to like a downfall, uh, can really make the, make a difference in your life, you know, and, um, perspective, and, and the way that you really see something is so important um, because it's like you're, you don't, you're not a victim of your circumstance. You know, these things can happen and it's devastating and it can really take a toll on you. But ultimately, you still have your own inner power and your superpower to respond to these things is where, where the magic is at, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just speak for my experience, of course, but that would be my message to others, you know, and that like it can, it can feel so debilitating at times. Um, but, you know, staying true to your North Star and finding a new way or just in, embracing a new chapter can be a, a beautiful blessing in itself. Mm-hmm. And I would just say, you know, knowing, knowing the business and knowing the business world and, and, and learning about this stuff. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, cause it, it's not just uh, business oriented, of course, you know, or it, it can also be like something in your, in your life that you're, you're battling or you're going right. through. And, um, there's a lot of different ways to interpret it, but that, that's also why she is Cheval has become such an important uh, message in itself is that, you know, she is fierce. She is overcoming. She is a work in progress. You know, no matter what she is, you know, it, there's a self-awareness to it. And there is that next big step you have to take in manifesting your own destiny. Yeah. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but like I said, you know, with a lawyer, but you may meet somebody and this guy's like, oh, I can do this for you. And he'll be the nicest person you ever met. He'll be he'll be act like you're your friend. He'll hang out. And you think and you think this guy's your friend. But it, on the other side, he's setting you up to, to really take advantage of you. So still, no matter what, like, hey, I'm your friend, Chris, come on, get a lawyer to say I got to have my lawyer look at it, you know. Before you sign anything. Lawyers are very good. (laughs) (laughs) I would always recommend hiring a lawyer. (laughs) Yep, 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 yep. Because this guy, this guy or girl may come on and want to be your best friend and and act like your best friend and say they have your best interest at heart when they really don't. Right, right. Definitely a good lesson to learn, but a hard one and a long one. (laughs) I went the long way. (laughs) Yeah. The reason why I found your story, Cheval, was because, you know, me and Chris are getting a little bit more serious about getting married. And I started looking at your wedding dresses because I always appreciated them. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this happened to my designer. Right. And when I was talking to Chris, I'm like. I'm going to freak out, but you know, it was such a great conversation having this with you, you know, and knowing your truth and, you know, um, the last bit of information I want to leave you guys with me and Chris have been together for almost 10 years. And when we get married, we're signing a prenup. We have complete faith in each other, but you never know. Well, like they said, like they said in the Godfather, it's the famous line. It's nothing personal. This is business. Well, I, I, I respect that a lot. And, um, I had also, I would also agree with that in the sense of like, if you have nothing to worry about, then you have no problem, uh, coming up with some kind of arrangement that yeah. in the worst case scenario, if something happens, you're both protected. Right. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. So yeah. 
Yeah, good for you guys. Well, I'm, I'm excited for you. Well, well, that's, well, <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe by the time you're ready, I'll be able to design again. We'll see. Well, that's the thing I see. I see on TV and stuff. You know, um, the girl, the guy doesn't want to sign the prenup and all that. And it's and it's like, okay, love is love, but business is business. It, it has nothing to do with the. I'm not. I love you less or anything like that. But this has to do with business. This is business. This is money. This is something else. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you do look at it in terms of protection, in the sense yeah. of just. Let's do this the best way we know how. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh. Well, we've come to our end. Thank you so much of all for sharing your story. And can you give us, um, can you give us, you got, you got a website or, um, or if somebody wants to learn more or anything like that or where they can go to on, on the line. We just launched our website. It's she is And I've got my, she is Cheval Instagram and all that glitters on the gram. Uh, those are the best, best places to find me at this point. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for the chat and for your kind support and um, being willing to, you know, the willingness to share my story. And can you can you spell C A Cheval so people know? Oh yeah, uh, it's she is so like a phrase in itself. Um, she is Cheval, and then Cheval is C H E V A L, and it's the okay. French word for horse. So okay, she is Cheval. Okay, she Cheval, and that will be, be in the show notes. That'll be in the show notes, <laughs> and uh, I'll let Rach close us out. All right, you guys. History is born on lines of hate. On here, we are trying to build lines of love and make you guys your best creative self, even with lawyering it up. Talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye. <Take it> easy. <laughs>